Hello, my name is Lisa Langell and welcome to Learning That Clicks. Today I want to walk you through a brief lesson on how to watermark your images and do so so that it's easy for you. As a wildlife photographer, I'm continually posting images to the web, but I want to help reduce the likelihood that they will be hacked by other users or used without my permission. So one of the simplest ways to do so is to watermark your images. I'll show you a couple of ways you can do so in Photoshop CS5. However, the processes are typically similar for other types of photo editing software you may use. Additionally, I'll highlight some options that are available via the web for those of you who may not own Photoshop or other editing software tools. If you don't have Photoshop or some of the other commonly used photo editing tools, you can certainly go to the web and find some online solutions. I've tried PicMarker, Watermark, and a few of these others, and they're very simple and easy to use. You can upload your picture, enter a watermark, and the system produces one for you. Many of them are free for basic use or have nominal fees for subscriptions. I suggest you try a few of those out to see what works best for you. There are several different ways in which you can create a watermark on your image. Today I'm going to show you how to do so in Photoshop CS5. However, the processes are typically similar with other types of photo editing software. First, create a duplicate layer so that you have a backup copy to go to. To do so, I'm going to select my initial layer and duplicate it by dragging it down here under the Layer button. Next, I'll go to the Text tool and select a text box into which I'm going to put my watermark. Third, I'm going to add some text but I have to choose a color that I wish to use for my text. I typically like to play with my colors to see what works best. I can change colors by selecting my foreground color, color picker, by clicking this box, and then clicking a color that's already in the image, perhaps the color of the bird's feather. I click OK, and then I can type my name, copyright, or other information that I'd like to appear on the photo. So, to do so, I simply type. Now many people will like to also add, and I do recommend, a copyright year. So I could put 2012 here. If you'd actually like to add a copyright symbol, you can use the Alt-0169 on your keypad or keyboard to do so. Alt-0169 will produce the copyright symbol. On a Mac, you would hit the Option button in G. To change the size of it, highlight it, and then go to the top and change the font size smaller or larger depending on what you'd like to see. One of the issues in adding watermarks in a lower or upper corner of an image is that it can be easily cropped or cloned out. One of the things that I recommend before you publish your image to the web is to make a copy of it and scale it down in size. First of all, I want to go to Image image size and then change the resolution to 72 and change the height to something much smaller such as maybe 8 by 12. People will still be able to see the image on the web but you're changing the resolution so that it can't be blown up to large sizes if someone were to copy it. Now I'm going to go and show this image full screen and you'll see that the resolution has changed slightly. Next, what you'll want to do with your text is select a text layer and then change the opacity up or down to suit your preference. Some will also prefer to put a watermark through the middle of the image rather than a lower corner. This is when your opacity layer will really be helpful because you don't want to take away from the image. However, you do want to make sure that someone can't clone or crop the actual copyright information out for viewing. In this case, what I'll do is put my copyright right in the middle and I can move this text box up or down to position it exactly where I want it to go. I can change the color if I want to do so to any color in the spectrum but then I can also to not detract from the image change the opacity and you'll get to scale this up and down and see what works best for you. If you'd like to change the font size, select the text and change either the size 
by using the font size. Or you can change the font by choosing from the different options available on your computer. Remember, when you're scaling down your image size for publishing to the web, make sure that you don't change your original image. Make sure that you're only doing this with a copy of your image so that you can always have a known original source to go back to. Once I'm ready to save this as a JPEG to publish to the web, one other thing I recommend doing is making sure through either Lightroom or Photoshop or your other editing software that you've put copyright information into the metadata. So to do so, I go to File, Info, I go to Description, and then I can title my image. I can make myself the author, and I can even include copyright information here. I can put myself as the owner of my business if I like, or whatever title you want to give yourself. I can put a description of this image. I can put keywords that will be viewable in a search engine, and I can change my copyright status to copyrighted and put a copyright notice in here so that others know that this image is copyrighted. Once I'm done, I click OK. Then I go to File, Save As, and I'll save this as a JPEG or whatever format you prefer. And I usually like to title it in some way so that I know that it's been watermarked for the web. And you can have your own labeling convention that you like. I'll click Save. I save it as the maximum size, but that's only 247K, which is far lower than the original image. And that's because I only want to use this for web purposes. I click OK. And I'm done. Now I can go and post my image to the web. I want to thank you for your time today, and I wish you well. Have a great day.